They claim the soul Bible has outlived its day. That there are some changes that need to be made. Let no man deceive. Take your Bibles. Or Turn with me to Matthew 24. Truth is determined by the test of time. Trust the old Bible with its ease and bounds. Never mind those people who want to throw it out. Churches are drifting and falling away. We need this soul book more than ever today. Tampered with the Bible and written it anew. Nothing is sacred. Oh, what will the children do? Our way of life is changing and people don't care. The signs of the end we see. To Empty Cross Ministries Daily Devotional Time. I'm Brother David. The name of the program is King James Version Exposed. Because we use the King James Version, we look at the verses, bring them to life, and expose the meaning. Today we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 19. I've entitled today's episode, Are You For Real? And we're going to see what happens to uh, some Jews that thought they could perform miracles like uh, Paul did. Certain Jews thought they, too, could perform miracles. Maybe it was because of all the wonders God used to perform. We see that Acts chapter 19, verse, 30, verse 13. They may have figured if Paul can do these miracles in the name of Jesus, perhaps we can too, if we use that magic word, Jesus. The seven sons of Sceva tried to cast out demons. When they did, they spoke what they thought would give them control over demons. We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. We see that Acts chapter 19, verse 13 again. Instead of making the demons flee, their attempt provoked the demons, saying, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. But who are ye? After that remark, the demons attacked the brothers. They stripped 
beat and chased the fake Christians away. We see that in Acts chapter 19, verse 16. Being a real Christian is nothing that can be faked, although many attempt it. It is more than dressing right, talking Christian, or mindlessly completing some religious ceremony or deed. It is not the action. It is the connection with God that is important. All the eloquent prayers one could ever make will not get higher than the ceiling if one is not saved and have a, have a relationship with God first. Faithful church going will make little difference in a person's life if he is not saved. Sincerely seeking and obeying God's will and way. Good deeds done for the cause of Christ are important and wonderful, but they will not mean anything at all if the person is not born again. Words do not gain God's approval, only trusting in his son's death as payment for one's sins does. The only thing that will make a difference is a converted, born-again heart that is sincerely seeking God, his way, and not one's own way. People can be fooled by the outward actions and behavior of a person claiming to be a Christian. The demons attacking the brothers knew the difference between actual and acting Christians. More importantly, God knows who are his and who are not. Do you honestly know whose side you really are on? Our thought for today is this. Being in a garage does not make you a car any more than being a church member will not make you a Christian. I need to get a drink here. Before we get to our scripture, there's a few words we need to understand exactly what they mean. That phrase, curious arts, means occult practices. That word disputing means discussing argumentative. That word divers, in this case, is referring to people. That word exorcist means casting out demons or devils that control the person. That re word repentance means concern of past sin or conduct enough to desire to stop or change such behavior. That phrase, vagabond Jews, they are those that claim to be Jewish but did not adhere to biblical laws and Jewish traditions. That brings us up to our scripture for today, which is Acts chapter 19. I'm going to read the entire chapter after I get another drink here. Excuse me. Acts chapter 19, beginning of verse 1. Once again, I am reading from the King James Version. And it came to pass that while Paulus was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the, baptiz with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened, and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude. He departed from them and separated the disciples, 
disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew and chief of the priest, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious hearts, curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them, and found it fifty thousand pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he went into Macedonia, two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, that he himself stayed in Asia for a season. At the same time, there arose no small stir about that way, for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone in Ephesus, but also throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that there be no gods which are made with hands, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And when they heard these things, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians, and the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered it unto the people, the disciples suffered him not, and certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him, that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with the hand, and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours, cried out, Greatest Diana of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye man of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open, and there are deputies. Let them implead one another. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be deter determined in a lawful assembly. 
for we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar. There may no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. This has been Empty Cross Ministries Daily Devotional Time. I'm Brother David. The name of the program is King James Version Exposed. I would encourage you to follow along with our daily Bible reading plan, which can be found on Empty Cross Ministries Facebook page, Empty Cross Ministries group Facebook page, and my own personal page, and it can also be found on our website, EmptyCrossMinistries.com. There's a little square on the right hand of your screen up at the top. You need to click on that to find the daily Bible reading program there. We're going to close out here with a prayer and a song. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you on bended knee, humbly, yet boldly stand before your throne, to lay praises and petitions before you. Father, you are the God of all creation. You are the only living God. Your justice is always tempered with mercy. Your ways are true. Your ways are absolute truth, Lord. Father, we thank you for the beauty of your creation, the beauty of the snow that has fallen over the last couple of days, that speaks of your power and of your honor and of your glory, Father. Father, be with those who are facing illnesses of any kind, whether they be physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. Just put your healing touch upon them. Be with those who are facing the loss of a loved one. Just make your presence known to them in ways that only you can do, in ways that they can see, feel, hear, and understand, Lord. Father, Forgive us when we fall short of your glory. And thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross, that his shed blood may hide those times from your sight, whether they be in word, deed, or thought. Father, help us to be genuine, real, born-again Christians, and still in our hearts the desire to do your work in your way, and it's in Jesus' precious name we pray, pray these things. Amen. Amen. Folks, stay safe, be blessed, stay in the Word, and write the Word upon your heart. cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Savior's side, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And be washed in the blood of the Lamb There's a fountain flowing for the souls unclean Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb?